Thank you for joining us. Now, I've known you for a while, but when I first met you, you were DJing at Cherry, and yes, then sir. suddenly you were a photographer as well. And you're so <laughs> unassuming, so unassuming, you neglected to tell me that you had written 10 books and photographic books as well, and uh, you were one of the lead contributors for the Motley Crew book, The Dirt, um, and you also neglected to tell me that you were in a band. Yeah, well, you know, there's probably more things that you could add on the list, but um, I'm kind of not in the habit of uh, going through a, you know, a resume uh, when, I, when I meet new people. But, um, look, I've always, um, ever since I was a teenager, I've, um, I've always had a creative side uh, to me that's come out that's been combined with my passion for music um, and in particular rock and roll music. So I remember, you know, being a teenager in my room and meant to be studying for exams coming up and instead I'd be making mixtapes up and then doing creative covers so that, you know, it, it looked impressive as well. So, you know, just things like that, early memories, and I've just always had passion projects on the go at any given time uh, related to, to rock and roll music. Mm, that's great. Skin Ink, um, yeah. that's got some really good graphics as well. Did you do those? Um, no. So a couple of designers that I've worked with uh, previously at, um, at, you know, like a web design company, uh, a lady, Jody, uh, designed the original logo um, and it was stylized in a chrome kind of uh, look for our album that we released back in 2001 uh, by another designer that I was working with at the time, Mano. Um, and we've recently just updated it again as well. So the, the band name Skin Inc. can be a bit of a mouthful and people say, what's that? But it's actually, it stands for Skin Incorporated. Um, so it's the I-N-C dot on the end and we've kind of put the two words together yeah. um, stylistically. Um, but the logos that we used in our first era, as we now call it, um, was quite bunched up and, and tight, so which made it a little bit harder to read. So... I was actually in between lockdowns, I was actually getting some, some tattoo work done by um, an artist at Chapel Tattoo uh, by the name of Addo. And um, I was talking to him about it and um, he actually redesigned the logo for us. So he separated the letters out a little bit more. So it's a little bit more legible um, and restylized it a bit. So now as we release new music, um, I've now got the ability to kind of uh, change colours and, you know, just kind of mess with the logo a little bit so that it's something new and fresh each time if we want to do that rather than kind of sticking with the same logo, which doesn't always work on kind of cover art. It's kind of um, rock enough to me, but it's it's kind of smooth enough as well that it's not too harsh. You know, it's, it's not like a death metal logo where it's like, <laughs> what the hell does that say? It looks like a bunch of twigs all stuck together. Yeah. Um, but it's not too kind of, you know, pop orientated or too electronic or anything like that. So I think it's, I think it's bang on personally. So what we've done for the cover of our new single um, is we've featured it as kind of the main focus point with a bit of a banner underneath. So obviously with the name Skin Incorporated and Skin Inc, it kind of ties in with tattoos as well. So we thought let's do it as um, a bit of a tattoo flash style. So, you know, when you go into a tattoo studio, you see all the different tattoo designs up on the wall and that, and often it's the colourful design on a white piece of paper. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, kind of what the cover of our new single, Life's a Bitch, is uh, kind of, you know, a little bit stylistically down that pathway. I think I've only seen the one where you're standing on your own. Yeah, so as we were filming the video, um, the uh, the photographer, uh, Rom, he, he just took a couple of still shots of me and, and sent me those through. So just to kind of give it a little bit more, I used that in some of the promo as well, just to give yeah. it a bit of a, a meaner good. edge. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're really happy with the way that, you know, the band is uh, being presented. I mean, we've always tried to do things as professionally um, as we can, um, obviously on a budget, you know, using the kind of resources that we can and access to different contacts in our network to kind of collaborate and work together. And, 
you know, we're quite happy with the way that, you know, the band's being, uh, being presented out there to people. Yeah, and you mentioned the first year earlier and you've got your um, Japanese limited edition. That yeah, yeah, we had a bit of fun with Japan. that. <laughs> Look, Japan's one of my favourite countries. I've been fortunate enough to, to visit, you know, the fine land there about 10 times and, um, you know, it's one of my favourite places to go record shopping and, uh, and stuff like that as well. So we want to kind of, you know, tap into that market a little bit as well and eventually, you know, our kind of big, hairy, audacious goal would be to, you know, do a tour of Japan and play some shows over there for some fun, you know. Um, so when we reformed after a hiatus of uh, only 20 years, <laughs> uh, we decided that, you know, whilst we worked on new material um, and came up with new music uh, for people to enjoy, that we would go back and, and re-release our back catalogue of our first EP and our album um, that, you know, were released kind of at the, the turn of the new millennium. Um, so we did that. We got that up onto all the streaming sites and uh, digital download platforms and all of that. Um, but then we thought, okay, you know, it's taking a little bit longer to kind of get these new songs together and get everything lined up properly in that. So we had the idea of basically um, creating a compilation album of all of our favourite songs off those past releases and putting them together on a new album. And um, we've targeted that to, you know, the Japanese market with a bit of a Japanese design on the cover with Japanese lettering and stuff like that. But the, the Japanese limited edition is really kind of tongue in cheek. We like to have a bit of a laugh along the way as well as you should with rock and roll. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, we've woken up out of this coma of 20 years and we're trying to get used to this new world. And now everything's digital. Of course. So, um, so the limited edition, you know, we're kind of saying that it's limited to digital only. There's no actual physical <laughs> release for this as well. Um, so just having a bit of fun with that as we, uh, you know, as we kind of grease the gears and get things going for our, our new era. It's a good segue. What actually brought about the end of hiatus? Yeah, well, I guess the, uh, the pandemic has provided us all with a bit of a, an opportunity to kind of reflect and, and have a bit of, you know, time where we look introspectively at, uh, at life. Um, and I think, you know, many of us, myself included, are kind of questioning, okay, well, what am I doing here? What's important <laughs> to me? What do I want to do going forward? And, and using it as a bit of a, a time for reassessment. And it so happened that um, our rhythm guitarist, Corey, and myself, both kind of um, our marriages were, were ending at the same time. So we kind of reconnected talking about, you know, some of those, uh, you know, issues and, and what was going on in our world and stuff like that. And look, all of the band members, we've always been um, friendly. Like the band ended on good terms. It was just the circumstances that ended it rather than, you know, the classic, um, you know, musical differences or, or anything else nastier. So we've always <clears throat> had a healthy respect for each other and for what we did and created. And, you know, we always said that if the opportunity presents itself again in the future, then, you know, let's consider it. So, you know, we got talking um, with some common interests again. Um, and also at the same time during lockdown, I started doing a bit of singing again you know, with a bit more time on my hands, I was like, oh, you know, let's just mess around here. So I started just, you know, singing over some kind of, you know, very guitar orientated karaoke versions of songs that I'd download <laughs> off iTunes. Um, and then, you know, I bought a, a new, you know, condenser mic, um, you know, and, and just using like, you know, garage band software and just started playing around with recording some vocals over the top of that and playing around with some of the software that's now available these days. And figuring all that out and it's like okay i can actually make some stuff work here so i was telling the guys about that and they're like all right well maybe we get together and we can write some new songs and send them over to you in melbourne because they're all in perth still yeah. it's a breeze using the technology it's <laughs> uh it's really quite good fun you've got the single coming out this week this friday yeah um, yeah. yeah that's exciting <laughs> It is indeed, yeah, to have some brand new music after 20 years. It's like, wow, okay. Yeah, I just want to go back to mm -hmm. your first EP. We're going to ask about the little uh, collector's edition. That... <laughs> yeah? Yep, yep. Yeah, yep. so 
look, we, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we always like to have a bit of fun and, you know, and be a bit tongue in cheek. Um, and we're all kind of KISS fans uh, as well. And that was kind of one of the things that brought us all together. And, you know, KISS are the masters of kind of, you know, merchandising and licensing and, you know, yeah. having a lot of crazy ideas and stuff like that. So we've kind of drawn on those influences of some of those, those types of bands. Um, so what we did was um, when we launched our uh, our first release, our Love Me Tomorrow EP, we had a limited collector's edition where um, those that purchased it would not only get the CD signed by everyone in the band, but they could actually get their own piece of the band. And by that, um, as I was getting some tattoo work done, um, at the time I was um, collecting all of my scabs as, as the tattoo was healing and and you know keeping those and and after a little while i amassed a bit of a collection so we were dropping a little scab into a little plastic bag uh <laughs> you know in the limited collector's edition where they actually get <laughs> into the band as well so yeah. my dna is kind of spread <laughs> so yeah that was a bit of fun at, at the time and yeah. it's still got some life uh in it now people are yeah. kind of you know interested in that as a yeah. bit of a crazy thing I, I haven't heard of anybody else ever doing such a yeah, thing um it probably wasn't really legal in terms of uh <laughs> you know, some of the laws but you know uh, whatever but you're in Perth, so it's okay <laughs> the most isolated capital city in the world so you know i've gone from the most isolated capital city to the most locked down capital city <laughs> now here in melbourne over the last couple of years so yeah crazy times and you were in new york as well which was so different again yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was a little while ago now, but I spent three years living in New York City, and um, you know that gave me a lot of fantastic rock and roll experiences as well. Both, you know, as a punter going and seeing gigs, and um, you know, going to kind of some of the events um, over there, and as a photographer, both you know at kind of red carpet events and uh, live shows, and also backstage as well. I I photographed a number of artists backstage in 2013 and put together a coffee table book of my photography uh with guns and roses to a photographer a friend of mine jason and we put that together in 2013 and you know had a blast doing that hanging out backstage and stuff like that so that's got one of my favorite covers uh yes with orianti yeah she's uh she's a sweetheart fantastic yeah. player yeah well, thanks for having me on it's my scene and you know, I try and help out and contribute where I can as well. And I think, you know, the work that uh, you do is, is fantastic at kind of supporting the scene across multiple angles. So um, so it's great to be on and, and share a little bit about, you know, the exciting new music. You know, we've got our new single, uh, Life's a Bitch, it's called, coming out this Friday. And I guess the song's really, you know, about, you know, it's a little bit about a working class song where, you know, as just ordinary people, we're, we're trying to get ahead in life and do the best that we can um, and have as much fun along the way. But no matter, you know, how hard we try and how good it feels like we're going at, at the time, shit happens in life, you know, through no fault of your own. Things are out of our control and, you know, the rug will get pulled out from under your feet, whether it's, you know, a relationship or whether it's your work or, you know, a whole pandemic situation going on in the world. And, and what can you do? You, you kind of, you, you're out of control. So it's really about, you know, life's a bitch. All these things happen in life and and then you die is how we finish the song. <laughs> so it's a little bit of fun. I know some of the lyrics are a bit dark. Um you know, it's got a little bit of a kind of heavy rock kind of vibe to it, but our songs always tend to be, even though they've kind of got twin guitars crunching away, you know, and, and, and riffing uh, that people will enjoy, um, there's a lot of melody there that is kind of uplifting. And I guess that comes from, you know, the music that we've loved growing up, you know, 70s rock and 80s kind of hair metal and stuff like that, you know, there's kind of those anthems that are uplifting and that's one of the things that we like about that kind of style of music um so even though some of the lyrics are a little bit kind of dark um i guess it's basically saying look you know life's a bitch there's nothing you can do about it so just deal with it um because it, you know it's on. the way it is yeah just <laughs> rock on we've got another couple of singles lined up um and the one after this is a little bit more, I guess, inspirational in some ways about, you know, rock and roll and, 
and how it um, how it can impact and influence and uh, and save people. Uh, we've recorded three uh, new songs. We've got about another three or four that we're kind of shaping up uh, to record soon. Uh, so yeah, it's all happening. We hope to release an album kind of later on in the year, um, and just keep churning out, you know, some some fun music and, and keep enjoying ourselves along the way. And I'm hoping there's a tour. <laughs> yeah, look, it's so up in the air. I mean, it's a little bit um, difficult in some ways because I'm uh, here in Melbourne and and the rest of the guys are in Perth. So, you know, obviously it starts to get expensive with you know one person or four people flying um to play shows you know as we come together so we've got to kind of pick our moment to do that and and now's not the time with the pandemic that's going on and the wa border lockdowns and all of that kind of stuff so <clears throat> it's not really on our radar uh, for the time being it's really about okay let's start you know creating some new music and getting it out there um you know working things digitally uh which is you know the go these days you can reach audiences that are into you know the kind of music that you create no matter what corner of the globe they're in these yeah. days it's a lot easier to do that so we're kind of having a crack at that um and you know if the opportunity comes up where you know i, I visit you know family and friends in perth and we tie a show in or if we can head up to Japan at some point in time, maybe do a warm-up show in Perth on the way through or something like that, you know, those in Melbourne as well. But uh, time will tell. I think, you know, with the way things are going with the pandemic and that, you know, it's it's still probably going to be a year or two away before that's, you know, a practicality for us. But who knows? I think it might be fun. I think it will be too, especially if you still have Maya. Steve, uh, our lead guitarist, he used to do... Um, yeah, at the end of our song Love Me Tomorrow that we ended our set with, that was kind of our, our standard closer. He would uh, he would take his shirt off before, um, you know, that song started and then towards the end there's a little kind of breakdown part and, you know, I'd turn around and he'd head over to his amp and he'd, he'd take a big swig of whatever the, the fuel is and uh, he had a couple of cigarette lighters down near the foldback um, speaker in front of him and he'd squat down and, he, and he'd kind of, you know, breathe fire. Um, and normally he'd get like three times, you know, three flames coming yeah. out, uh, which is great. We've actually just uploaded some some footage that Channel V shot of him doing it at our uh, performance at the Big Day Out in the year 2000. Yeah. That's great. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so, but he hasn't done it for a while. He got a little bit concerned about, you know, the long-term health effects of, of you know, that fuel his throat and stuff like that so it's awful when you grow up and you start to become responsible <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> um are you still going to be doing some scissor kicks though oh you know they i can whip them out at any point in time so uh <laughs> whether i'm on stage or off stage you know that <laughs> that that could could happen depending on my mood so yeah just uh Look be careful it. around me sometimes i think <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much paul good luck yeah thanks very much for that mary yeah we're going to release the uh the single on our website which is skinninkrocks.com um and also on our Bandcamp page um you know hopefully it'll be up on you know spotify and itunes and you know apple music and all the, the other sites as well by then but yeah. first things first we want to make it available to people so that they can download um you know the song from our website or from Bandcamp and we'll have the video on YouTube available on Friday ready to go as well.